Hey everybody, what's up guys? It's the Insane Game Freak here. Uh, I know there will be a lot of Switch videos in the coming days and weeks and months, but I did want to take the time to talk about Microsoft and the state of the Xbox brand because of the recent Scalebound news from, what was that, last week I guess? Last week or the week before, I think it was last week though. Um, I never got a chance to sit down and talk about it. And for those who know, because of my history of Microsoft, it wasn't like really how my priority, because you know, uh, Microsoft, Switch reveal, you know, Switch, 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 or I'm going to stop them being stupid. Uh, but I did want to talk about the state of Microsoft and their situation, and may or, it may or may not give some suggestions, but kind of just start a real discussion. So, we found out about the cancellation of Scalebound, and I, I was sitting there going, well, what what's the future of the Microsoft brand? Now, obviously they're kind of backed into a corner. A lot of people don't when, agree with me, but that's just my thoughts. And the reason why I say that is this. Microsoft didn't leave themselves many options, and on the road that they were walking ever since the original Xbox, the road was like a path, and then over the time, as we got to the 360, and especially with the Xbox One, it just got really fucking narrow to now where it's like you literally only have one choice. Now... To kind of explain what I mean is that the X, the original Xbox and even the 360 to a, a lesser degree had a lot more variety of games. This I'm not talking specifically third party, I just mean in terms of exclusives. Because it's obvious that the game that Phil Spencer is trying to play now with the Xbox One is the exclusives game. The problem is this is a game that you've never been good at playing and you've actually gotten worse at playing over time. So now you've kind of backed yourself into a situation where you're trying to play Nintendo's game without really nearly any of, not even close to nearly enough IPs to justify playing that game. And considering what just happened to Scalebound, your efforts into improving that have become darker and darker as the curtain is slowly closing on you. Uh, now, just to talk about some ongoing Microsoft problems that are now coming back and biting them in the ass. The first thing is this, they never really kept any of their exclusives. If anyone knows, by the end of the 360 generation, there weren't really anything, there wasn't really anything left on Microsoft that was exclusive. So when you jumped into the Xbox One, you had really nothing to go off of. Like, I can't, what, what IP, I guess Gears, is Gears, Gears is the 360 era, or is that the Xbox, I thought that was the 360 era. The point I'm trying to make is, there were, there weren't that many new IPs from the 360 generation that could just easily jump into the Xbox One generation. Unlike Sony that had Uncharted, had Infamous, had Killzone, had uh, uh, Last of Us, they had games that they literally took from the PS3 and they could easily transition. Even Nintendo's doing that with things like uh, Splatoon 2, Xenoblade 2, uh, shit, I'm trying to think of some other new IPs. There aren't, I mean, Nintendo doesn't have a lot of them, but they also have a lot of long-standing IPs that are still, that still make money, which is pretty much what Microsoft ended up doing is doubling down on those, which is why we have like, what, three or four forwards of games on the Xbox One? But the problem they've created for themselves is that you never built up an exclusive library and carried them over with consoles, whereas the other two companies did. They took everything they made in, the, in, in their previous console generations and carried it over, so their IP list just got bigger and bigger and bigger, or maybe in more Nintendo's case, they start pushing more of their, their small IPs and it became bigger and bigger. Things like Fire Emblem, things like Fire, uh, Animal Crossing, which were already IPs, but they were kind of, not dead, but they weren't really being utilized as much, which is why they got revived in the 3DS. Or things like Kid Icarus that was dead and got completely revived for the, uh, for the 3DS. Um, and that led into a stronger and stronger library, whereas Microsoft just said, I'm just going to... Because Microsoft, when we hit the 360, just started money hatting everything. It was like, we need exclusive deals. Here's some money. Mine is exclusive for a while now. And they had all these exclusive IPs and created this false sensation of, all these are ours. Look at our catalog. Look how great it is. And it was great. And then as time went on, oh, let's go on PlayStation. Oh, let's go on PlayStation. Oh, let's go on PlayStation. Oh, it's going on PlayStation. And with the Xbox One, it didn't even, it's not even them losing it to PlayStation. They're losing it to just the PC. It's just like, oh, PC port. Oh, PC port. Oh, PC port. And then I guess Phil Spencer's whole thought process was, 
well, if we can't make it exclusive to the Xbox One console, let's make it exclusive to the Microsoft brand. The problem with that is, is that the PC is usually better in every way. The only disadvantage with Windows 10 is that you're locked into the Windows Store instead of getting off of Steam. So you don't have all the available options that you would if it was a Steam game versus a Windows 10 game. Uh, but the point is still, if it came down to it and you just had to bite the bullet, are you going to bite the bullet with a console or are you going to bite the bullet with the PC that you probably already own and you would just probably have to pay for Xbox Live or some shit? Which is still stupid. It's even dumber in that case, but still, it's a thing you could do. Some people, people are just going to bite the bullet and just do it on the PC they, before biting the bullet and buying it on the console. I'm not saying people don't buy Xbox consoles, but my point is, is that it's become more and more apparent that, like, they don't have as many options as other companies at this point. It's like literally, you, and it's become worse because you can't go the exclusive route because you had three generations to build up a library and literally the only three games that you have to show up for, the three IPs that anybody ever talks about, is fucking uh, Halo, Forza, and Gears. And there, was, and there were talks about Gears becoming a third party, exclu becoming, a, becoming another game that you lost. Luckily, everything seems to be fine, but we'll see how long that lasts. And then every time you make a new IP, none of them ever hit the levels that you want them to, which gets into the second problem. For, for a company that gets a lot of third-party support, for some reason, you like a lot of game variety. Your fan base literally only gives a damn about, like, a few genres, and I mean a very select few genres. And that's partially due to the fact that they capitalized on what was hit selling at the time, which is shooters they're the ones who really pushed the shooter genre and the shooter genre became kind of the main genre and it still kind of is now um which allowed them to do as well as they've done which is with stuff like halo and gears the problem that that creates is, is that means any other franchise you throw on your console it's like cool it's on your console but no one really wants to buy it for your console why do you think there's a lot there's this dumbass rhetoric that goes around and it pisses me off just because it doesn't make any sense Sony has a lot of games that aren't exclusive, but are perceived as exclusive, even though they're not fucking exclusive. And the reason why is because it wouldn't make any sense to buy it on any other console except for Sony, or Sony's the only console that has it. So it's like, it's, it's kind of like with the Kingdom Hearts 3 announcement. Kingdom Hearts 3 is on Xbox One. And you're sitting over, and all, all the gamers collectively were sitting in the corner going, yeah, so I'm buying that on PlayStation 4, right? Because... And that was, and that gets into the other problem. Microsoft never cultivated all right, all demographics. They literally only focused on the U.S. and Europe, and that's and all they had to do for those two fucking territories was come out with consistent shooters and sports games. That's all you fucking needed to cover the states, the states and Europe. When it came to Japan, Japan wanted a lot more variety in their shit. And you guys either didn't get the games or there was no reason to buy the games on your console because no one liked your console. Like, Microsoft has always struggled in Japan and they struggle just as hard or if not harder than they always have in there. To the point where I think they're the only console manufacturer I know of that in 2017 or 2016 or 2015 that couldn't even sell a thousand consoles within a week. It's nuts. It's like, what the fuck is... Like, how bad... How how limited is your fan base and how limited is your game library or at least IP range to where you can't even get to sell a thousand consoles a week? The Wii U was doing that. And the Wii U is getting getting its ass beaten sales by the other two, and for some reason it was able to sell thousands. The I think the Wii U's weakest area was Europe because it's just hard to appeal. It's hard to appeal to that country for them because they don't really have any sports games. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the other problem. So you didn't really cultivate a different type of audience. So now, so they're in this position where if you try to play the exclusives, you don't have any exclusives to play the game with. You also don't have any variety in your games, which is why everybody goes to Sony. And then the only thing you really have on the competition is your online services and this pseudo play everywhere thing, which is more of a detriment because it doesn't make people want to buy your console. It makes people want to buy the fucking... Uh, it makes people want to buy the games on PC. So the only the only choice, and this is what I mean by the narrow road, when it comes to what they can do in the future, is you could start trying to build an IP, like some variety in your IPs. The problem is that, as I said before, if they do, I don't. They've done that very seldomly, and when they do, you have situations where they get canceled, 
or they don't sell for a shit because your fan base literally only cares about one type of game. Now, if you have more games like Sunset Overdrive, which ironically enough is not only still a console exclusive, it's still Xbox One exclusive. I'm surprised. Um, you have more games that kind of... The thing Microsoft has to do is have to do a lot of bridge the gap games. Because of the way Xbox is set up and the way its fan base is pushed, you can't really come out with a platformer and expect that shit to just sell gangbusters. You're going to have to do what they would something Overdrive was trying to do, which is create a game that hits the Microsoft audience but also introduces them to another genre, which is why Sunset Overdrive was essentially a uh, Jet Set Radio with guns. That's what that's what Sunset Overdrive is, Jet Set Radio with guns. Uh, and it was very creative. It's actually probably the only Xbox One game I still want. I still would like to play even now in 2017. Uh, but the road now that they hit, and, and the advantage they had in the 360 generation they don't have anymore, which is that even though they weren't the strongest console, they came out first, they were easy to develop for, and money. Well, Phil Spencer doesn't want to play the money game anymore, so they automatically lose out on all the exclusive deals they used to get, which now you see for Sony consoles, like exclusive map, DLC first, only on PlayStation, greatness awaits. You know, that, that kind of shit. They lose that out because Phil Spencer wants to take the high road now, which is smart, but unfortunately you built you built your other console off of the money hat on and also the fact that your console was easy to develop for, and now you've lost both of those as selling points. So the only thing you could do now to even maintain, to even become back close to make this a, a fucking, to even get back into like the main good graces is having a console that is stronger, which is a, uh, what the Scorpio is going to have to do. The Scorpio literally, that's the only thing it can do. And if they wanted to push new IPs that would be encouraged, it's, I don't know if it's too late for that though, considering how long they've gone. And, and some people would say it's never too late, which is true. I'm just saying they, they have a fan base that's so rooted in one types of games, like a specific type of game. It's really hurt them, which is why there are more people with PlayStation 4s and Xbox Ones on top of that shitty-ass launch they had, which people like to give Sony all this props, but Sony literally just did the bare minimum and lucked out because Microsoft and Nintendo both fucked up their launches. Uh, Microsoft ended up taking hits because of it, because not only did they fuck up their launch, they had to go back and revise the console near the very like last minute, and they had to fucking later on remove parts of the console to make it more appealing, which is why we got something. We had to, they took the Connect out, and then they had to drop it another hundred dollars, and then they came out with a slim model. That's a pain in the ass, but that's what happens. That's what fucking happens when you fuck up a launch. You have to suffer. The difference is that Sony could, Sony kind of came back with it because Sony still pushes new IPs, and Sony still has a lot of varied gamers. So even if you don't necessarily like one genre, Sony got you covered with a few other genres. With Microsoft, it's literally the opposite. It's like, and it, I don't, and I never really, I don't even understand it now. I think it's just because of the amount of push it got during the 360 generation. Because Microsoft has other genre of games on their consoles. It's just that like, the only ones that seem to get any play is the is the fucking online shooter, which might partially be due to the fact that they're the ones who push for this online gaming system, and most other genres don't lend themselves as well to online as shooters do. Shooters are primarily built for online, and they probably, and from what I remember, they only really marketed their shooters. They don't ever push their other obscure games the, when they do get them, like the random Naruto exclusive that's on that console. Still, I'm surprised. It's like, it's that one exclusive that's still there, and you never understood why. It's just a weird situation that transpired. And, for, and to be honest with you, it's not like I, I, I hate Microsoft. I don't, there's a lot of things about Microsoft that I don't like. But it's not to the point where I wouldn't be willing to buy a console. It's just that they've never really given me a reason to. And it's because they don't appeal to a certain type of gamer. Like, they just don't appeal at all. Like, you can say what you want about Nintendo. But Nintendo usually has a game genre that fits at least every type of gamer. Even if it's just one game, they have a game. Microsoft, you couldn't even say that. You couldn't even come close to saying that. Which is why I feel like they're in such a shitty situation because they narrowed their road as the further they got into the console generation. And on top of that, they've been consistently losing money while going down this path. So your path is getting smaller and smaller 
and you're dropping more and more change behind you as you're walking. So like your your fucking wallet's getting lighter and you and, and you're stuck on this weird path where you can only go one direction. You can't even branch out anymore. I mean, obviously they could now and it's not like it's not like the, the path is closed. It's just that there's a whole bunch of fucking woods and weeds and trees and shit you gotta go through. And so now Microsoft's gonna have to has a decision to make. They could just chase the only road they got left, which is power. That's literally it. If they can play, if they can play the power game, they might power game and money heading. Go back to the two things that helped them out in the 360 era. Although realistically, they were losing money there too, which was the problem. And the reason why they want they stopped this generation, um, they would probably do better than they have been doing. But the smarter, to, in my opinion, would be to start pushing new IPs. Like the Sea of Thieves game that's coming out. I heard Project Spark got canceled or it's or is on hiatus or something. They really, and I think Phil, that's his goal, is to push more new IPs. But he really needs to push them. And he needs to make sure they're Microsoft IPs, not this fucking third-party IP bullshit. Because you're not going to build a fucking real library of games. This is one of the reasons why people make fun of Microsoft saying, oh yeah, they only got like three games, genres that you care about. So if you don't care about Forza... Gears or Halo, then you don't fucking need it. That's crazy. You shouldn't. You're a con. You've you've had three consoles at this point, and those are the three games that everybody talks about. It's Halo, Gears, and fucking oh, and, and well, some people go. What about Rise? Well, they need to make a sequel to Rise, and they need to consistently support Rise because Rise literally came out, and then no one talked about it after it came out. Sunset Overdrive kind of went through a similar situation. A lot of people still say Sunset Overdrive is a really good game. But then they just went right back to Halo and Gears. Like, in the same year, you got, like, another Halo game, and you got, like, the third or fourth Forza game. It's like, dude, I get it, but you're not pushing the other games consistently. Like, Rise and and Sunset Sunset Overdrive are, like, the only two games from the Xbox One's library other than, like, Dead Rising. And there are pushes for it. It's just that you you see how well that shit sells. Microsoft is fighting an uphill battle. I would say even worse than Nintendo's is. But that's also a Nintendo fans buy, so take that for what you will. I just kind of wanted to talk about that because I, in that situation, they need to keep pushing those new IPs and pushing the genres that aren't shooters. Because even though shooters are the main genre, I'm not saying walk away from shooters. You need to tell, remind people that, hey, that's not the only thing you can play on our console. And, it's not the, and, there, and there are other games worth investing into. So, uh, I just, because playing the Scorpio game isn't really, to me, ain't really worth it. Oh, I'm I'm more powerful. So you're just, but you're still stuck in the same hole as you were before. Or if you're going to play the power game, do it in tandem with new IPs and different genre game pushes. Because they don't really push a lot of their extra shit. Like, ReCore kind of just came out and like nobody talked about it. I didn't even know Record was I remember that. I remember when Record came out I didn't realize that it came out that soon and then it was hit with mediocre, mediocre reviews and you're like oh it's great guys. But uh please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below thank you guys for watching. This has been the Insane Game Freak here. Yeah I'm the Insane Game Freak god damn it uh <laughs> life's a game. Play to win and I will catch you all later a piece of Microsoft Xbox Power to the players. Or is that GameStop? Nah, fuck it. It's the same thing anyway. <laughs>